What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another video. I'm here to talk about Greenleaf Season 2, Episode 8, uh, the mid-season finale. So by the time, when I finally kind of like got into the show, um, the season had already started and you know, it was kind of, I don't like to start reviewing the show in the middle of the season. I like to start it from the beginning, but I did want to come in and talk about the mid-season finale and then when it comes, when the other half of the season picks back up, then I review it. Um... But y'all, this finale, this finale was good. I give it a, a I say an A. So, uh, I think I'm going to start off with Gigi. The episode picks up uh, with Gigi going to Mac, to find Mac. Because if y'all remember last episode, you know, she got pissed off when she saw that bouquet of flowers and saw that it was from Matt. And so she jumped in uh, the security car from the church and was driving. She was going almost 80 miles an hour, but the street that she was driving on looked like the speed limit should have been around 35, maybe 45 at the max. So in the midst of her driving, you know, she's having all of these like recollections where she's remembering different conversations, and things that she's had with people. And all of a sudden a deer hops across the street. And so in, in you know, her trying to avoid and hit the deer, she swerves off the road and crashes the car. So she calls uh, Rick Fox character. I can't remember his name. And he picks her up and takes her back to the house. You know, the family, especially the uh, bishop was kind of, they looked at it as like a whole thing of, you know, God is, you know, trying to give you a sign that girl, you need to leave this alone. Uh, and even Sophia was just kind of like, girl, like you doing a little bit too, mo too much. I know you still upset about everything that went down, but at some point you just gonna have to let it go. Like you could have got killed, and you know I still got my I got my own life to live, but I want to live that life with you. Like girl, you you out here living recklessly. You can't be doing that. You doing the most. And Grace, uh, Grace tells her like, girl, you know I can't make no promises, but I'm gonna try. So, um. We, I'm going to get all of the irrelevant stuff out of the way. So, there was a scene with Charity was changing the baby. She gets a call from Jabari where he asked her, you know, um, how soon can can you come to Nashville tomorrow? And she was basically like, girl, this is short notice. Like, I got a baby. I just can't be pop up and leaving. Um, but she was like, let me find out what I can do. So we get to a scene where she was in church leading praise and worship. You know, Kevin was sitting there with the baby and he looks around, turns around and makes eye contact with Aaron like, hey, boo. So after the service, I'm get, it was either after the service or the next day, she comes back and to the office where Kevin works and was basically like, girl, can I go to Nashville? Um, she was like, I know that it's short notice. And he was like, well, where am I going to stay at? You know, I don't leave. She was like, girl, you can just go stay in the house. And then he was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Because, you know, the, you know, Aaron is staying up in the house, too. So he was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, we can stay in the house, whatever, whatever. So, you know, she was like, thank you. And he was like, girl, that's no problem. Trust me. So we get to this scene uh, with Skanks. He was, quote, unquote, prepping to go preach his sermon. And, you know, Jacob, you know, ha has really not been feeling Skanks like that, especially when he found out that that money that he was gambling with was the church's money. So at this particular point, the church ain't got no money. The church is in the red. Bishop Skanks tell Jacob, girl, don't worry about it. I got it. So he goes into this whole thing talking about uh, the blessings of God and wop, wop, wop. And if you sow this money, you know, you're going to be blessed. Like he was pretty much telling them to give the biggest thing you got. Don't give me no dollar bills, no fives, no tens, no twenties. Give me hundreds and fifties. And then he go into this whole thing like, girl, y'all going to be blessed. Well, 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 I'm sitting there like, see, one of the issues, I mean, I guess there's a plus side and a downside because, you know, there are pastors out here that all they are, all they care about is money. And they do preach these false messages where, oh, you give all this money, you're going to be blessed. And that's the reason why a lot of these, you got a lot of these preachers that's living in these big houses, driving these nice cars. And they, and their congregation is living in run down houses and the pro they they live in inefficiencies like Jacob and Carissa. So but then on the other hand, people can look at it as like a like a wake up call, if you will, like girl, my past that's the type of stuff my pastor do. My you know, because I mean, you know, a lot of you know, because a lot of these preachers that preach these messages of, oh girl, give all your money to the church, they these the like it's like they got this this way about themselves where 
they like these people I can't explain it but it's like these people are hypnotized or something where they be just be giving all their money to the church. Like this lady that go to my church, um, she's an older lady in the church and the church and she the church that she went to before she was coming to our church, they basically taught the same thing, like girl, give all your money. I'm talking about she was giving like all her money, like her rent money, her light bill money, all this stuff. And then when she would come back to the church and be like, hey, you know, my light bill, do I need some money? They wouldn't give her no money. I'm just like, girl, girl, y'all need to learn how to read the word for yourselves and get the true understanding of the word. It ain't, it ain't nothing. Okay. Yeah, the Bible tell you to pay tithes and offerings. It ain't nothing in that Bible that tell you you got to give all every last cent of your money to the church. I, I wouldn't be going to no church like that. I'm just saying. But anyway, and so this whole time he preaching, going off like, girl, ooh, if you get this money, give this. Cause he was like, girl, don't give no no mustard seed blessing or no no apple seed blessing or whatever. Give a, a beanstalk seed and you're gonna get you're gonna get a, a beanstalk blessing. I was just like, girl, and all the people in the congregation were just like, yes, I'm ready to give all. I said, girl, y'all just so. <laughs> They probably go to one of them churches where the pastor just preach stuff. Because, you know, there are some pastors that preach stuff and be like, girl, just take what I say for face value and keep it moving. One of the things that I've always respected about my pastor is that whenever he teaches certain things, especially when it pertains to like tithes and offering and things and, you know, the various different doctrines that, you know, different denominations have, whatever. He always, um, you know, can go back to the Bible and show us you know, where he's preaching from. It's not just like, okay, I, it is what it is. You just got to listen to what I say and do what it, you know, he don't work like that. And that's one thing that I respect about my past. But anyway, so Jacob and, uh, is the wife's name Clarissa or Carissa? I want to say Carissa. But anyway, so they sit in the pulpit just like, girl, I can't believe we following this man. We left one, you left one controlling pastor to sit up under another controlling pastor because when he was up under his father, he didn't have a backbone. But when it got connected with skanks, he gained a backbone to, to bow up, to buck up against his daddy. But where the backbone at to buck up against skanks? Because you, I mean, all this stuff that skanks doing, some he should have been got put in his place. And so at the service, Jacob and Carissa was talking and were just like, "Girl, this ain't gonna work." Like. We need to figure something out. Jacob was like, I got a plan. She was like, well, what's your plan? Because I hope it ain't got nothing to do with you running back with your tail between your legs. This. Girl, Carissa does not care for Lady May at all. But anyway, so eventually, because apparently the, the mama and daddy, Bishop and Lady May had gave Jacob and Carissa some money for their wedding present. Now, it must have been a lot of money because they came, because Jacob came to Skanks at the end and was just like, girl... I know you in the red, you know, we can give you this money to, to, you know, to get your church back where it need to be. And in return, you give us the deed to triumph too, and we can go on about our business. And, you know, Skanks was trying to do that whole controlling thing like, girl, after everything I did for you, you just going to try to turn your back and walk out on me. Ain't nobody going to want to come follow you after they find out how you basically just gave me your behind the kiss and wop, wop, wop. And Jacob was like, girl... It ain't even like that. I respect you and I thank you for everything you did for me, but it's time for me to move on. Like, girl, part of the reason why I followed you in the first place is because you promised me I was going to have my own building. And, and obviously, you don't know what you're doing in your church. You you going around uh, taking the church money and gambling with it. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get Kevin out of the way. He was sitting in the house with Aaron. He had put the baby to sleep. They had been drinking. They had just some kind of conversation. He was getting a little bit more comfortable when Aaron Aaron put his hand on his back. They were looking at each other's eyes. They started kissing. Uh, Aaron took off Kevin Bill, and, and it was what it was. So, Matt, um, he was getting ready to go to church. Him and the girlfriend. I think her name was Lorraine. They was getting ready to go to church. He got a phone call from Michaela. She basically was like, but he didn't answer. Lorraine was like, girl, who was that? You know, why? If, you know, I, I understand that's your niece, but why she keep calling you like that? And he was like, because the, she don't like the mama and the family treat her like crap, you know, whatever. So, I, you know, if we got this relationship where she can call me, whatever. And, and the mama was like, well, tell, I mean, and Lorraine was like, well, girl, tell her to go find her some friends to deal with her mess with and stop calling you. 
And he was like, I'll tell you or whatever. So when they get to church, he was basically like, girl, I need to call her back and get this straight. I can't go into service with this on my mind. So he calls Michaela back to her girls. You know, the mom, uh, Michaela was like, hey, my mama went off. She hit me. I need somewhere to stay. He was like, girl, hit rocks. I don't have time for you. I hung up the phone. So... In the midst of this, um, Zora asked to go to the studio with uh, Rashawn Fagan. That's his real name. I don't know his name on the show. He was in the studio singing a song. He was like, y'all, you know, what you think? She was like, it sound good, but on the on the brick. It was some, some part in the song where she was like, girl, you was a little bit flat, but other than that, it was good. So he come out the studio like, girl, come out here, let me holler at you. Step into my office. And he was, I was like, I, I was like, if he go out there and hit that girl, we gonna have an issue. But he was just like, girl, who you think you is? You coming up in here trying to embarrass me? Like, girl, I brought you in this circle. You ain't got no experience in the music business. You gonna come up in here trying to tell me that I sounded flat next time I asked you for, she, no, because she said, girl, you asked me my opinion. He was like, yeah, I asked you, but next time I ask you for your opinion, just tell me it was good and keep moving. So he go back in the studio. Now, mind you, everybody in the studio was they was listening to the whole conversation. So after he go back in the studio and go back to singing, he she called Sophia and was like, "Can you come get me?" She was like, "Yeah." Now, in the midst of this, she was supposed to have been going and meeting with Gigi and uh, Darius at dinner. So I'm gonna pause and and rewind. So after they get back from church, Mac and Lorraine. He gets a call from the dude that Jacob hemmed up in the hallway uh, last episode, basically telling him, like, girl, the deal is off the table. I ain't, you know, I can't fool with you. Lose my number, whatever. So he get pissed off because he thinking that Gigi done got in his ear um, and said something. And she was, he was like, did she do this or did she cast him? And he was like, girl, you did it to yourself. Don't call me. Lose my number. So now he getting pissed off. He gets, he, you know, Lorraine was like, girl, who was that? She was, he was like, none of your business. She said, excuse me. He was like, why are you always asking so many questions? So she, they go into this whole back and forth and he basically tell her like, girl, I don't even know why I was even interested in you. You're not even all that cute. You old, you rusty, you raggedy, you, you secondhand and wop, wop, wop and wop, wop, wop. And he told her to get out. So he called Michaela and was like, girl, you still need somewhere to stay. She come over to the house. They watch some TV. He give her something to drink. She eventually fall asleep. And he tries, you know, attempts to try to molest her. I guess, you know, which I don't want to say I feel bad for him because I don't. But, you know, it's it's always hard when you have a, a, a past and you're on this path of trying to get on with your life and be a better person and trying to leave the past behind you. And it's like. It, it, all of your attempts, like every time you, you make one step forward, you get knocked two steps back. And so, you know, he was kind of at the point, girl, because he's still saying that he didn't do none of this stuff. And so he's kind of at the point now, like, girl, you know, everybody is saying that I did this. I might as well just go ahead and do it for real. So he attempted to try to molest her. She wake up and was like, girl, get up off me. I ain't got time for you, girl. And so it makes me, because I know when Gigi talked to her, and the other episode, a lot of people were saying that they felt like she was lying when she said he never touched her. Um, and so I, be I believe that she was telling the truth when she was saying that he never touched her because of the way. Because I kind of feel like, I don't know, but I can't really, I can't really explain it the way I want to explain it. But I, but I believe that when she said he he never touched her, she was being she was being honest. So they still waiting on Sophia at the restaurant. Um, now in the midst of this, Sophia finally shows up to the studio to pick up Zora. She was like, "Girl, what took you so long?" She was like, "My phone died and I got lost." Now mind you, the dude that she went to the studio with was gone. I was just like, girl, so you came with him to the studio, but he couldn't drop you back off. Not unless she told him, like, girl, um, I'm Sophia coming. Because when she called Sophia, I was like, now, I hope she don't, Sophia don't show up and he, you know, start trying to get crazy or whatever. So, you know, they calling Sophia. Um, no, she was just sitting there like, girl, 
you know, where's Sophia? Like, she ain't calling me. That's not like her. And so she gets a phone call. Now, at first, I was thinking that it was Michaela calling her like, girl, this is Michaela. Matt just tried to, you know, run up on me. He liked it, got done up, but I got up out of there. But it was Matt. Matt basically was like, girl, you should have just left, it, left this alone. I'm going to show you who I really am. And you're not going to like the man that you see. And so she getting scared because she thinking, okay, Sophia not answering the phone. So he must have got her. So she driving to his house. In the midst of this, she gets a call. She calls the boyfriend and was like, girl, have you seen Sophia? He was like, no, she dropped me off like three hours ago. I ain't heard from her. And she, he was like, is everything okay? She was like, well, if, if, she, if, you, if you talk to her, tell her to call me. She gets to Mac house. She banging on the door. She run up in there like, girl, where's my daughter at? Wop, wop, wop. So they had this whole back and forth. He was like, girl, you should have just left it alone. Now I'm going to have to show you what it really is because I told you that I ain't the one to mess with. So at one point, he slammed her up against the wall. He sl They fell into the table, broke the table. And I'm sitting there like, girl, if you're going to try to run up in somebody's house and try to be bad, the least you could do is be able to fight. But anyway, you know, they was going back and forth. He was like to choke her out. And she grabbed a piece of the table and cut him in the neck. And the episode ended with, him, with her asking him, like, girl, where is my daughter? Now... I don't know why he, when she kept saying, like, girl, where's Sophia? Why he didn't just say she not here? Side note, for these people to be preachers and, and, and supposed to be so holy and sanctified, they should be doing a whole bunch of cussing. I'm just saying, but anyway, trying to make sure I don't remember anything or will forget anything. Um, the whole Kevin and Aaron situation, we had been, you know, feeling the sexual tension between them for a while, but I didn't know that it was going to go down between them as quick as it did. Um, now, of course they, you know, we don't know what's going to happen on the other half, but I'm kind of wanting to predict that somebody is going to walk in on them while they in the middle of doing what it is they're doing. Um. Either that or the baby going to wake up and start crying. Like something, I don't know. But I mean, eventually it's going to get found out. Um, yeah, y'all, that's all I pretty much want to talk about. I, I don't think I missed anything important. But if I did, y'all can leave it down in the comment section down below. And I thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow me on my social media, which will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.